Hi, well I'm not sure if I'm actually getting audio or not, so uh, I've, I had to go live and I know you're not getting anything on uh, the video, except for me. But I need to find out if I'm getting sound here. It's just that the uh, YouTube um, management panel is telling me that, oh, I can hear myself, so yay. <laughs> well, okay, well, good morning. Hello. I'm Kitecraft, and welcome to another random build. <laughs> Pardon me. So what is a random build? Well, you know, you'd be working on something, or you'd be sitting there watching a TV show, and all of a sudden you think of something, and you realize, hey, I need a particular tool, or um, I need a particular part. And you think about it for a couple of minutes, and you realize that you have pretty much everything you need. It's only going to take a few hours. Maybe on a 3D printer, a couple of hours, maybe a couple more hours. You know what I mean? It's just one of those quick things. So you figure, all right, I'm going to drop everything and go ahead and do it. <laughs> that's what a random build is to me. And that's what we're doing here. This is part two. So yesterday on part one, uh, what I did was I explained exactly what my, uh, to recap, exactly what I was doing. I have this NVIDIA Shield. And I want to make it into a vertical camera. So I'm using an IP camera software to stream it back to my uh, main computer uh, to try and improve the quality because as you can tell the quality of this video it is what it is um, I'm not intentionally downgrading this or doing anything weird to it um, it's just I have a crappy uh, webcam uh, this is all I got I got a fantastic computer crappy webcam so if you were to go to my patreon account and do anything that's necessary there it's uh, kitecraft at patreon.com there uh, the first $25 I raise will actually go to a visual micro uh, subscription so I can get back into coding some new projects the way they change their subscription service I suddenly have to pay $25 but I'm okay it's really good and I'll talk about that later the next uh, 75 to 100 dollars I raise will actually go to a really nice web camera and that will solve all of my other problems and hopefully this will work as well um, okay but anyways <laughs> so this is a camera um, and if I raise enough money I'll even pay rent so that'll be good and this will be a web camera that faces down and I needed a tripod that could hold it all together and I thought okay well let's uh, let's see how quickly I can make a tripod so that's what part one of this is and on Fusion 360 I went ahead and I designed this puck it's got the three holes in the bottom and one hole on the side in order to have the outright or the uh, stick going out and a, and a back foot so I just pulled this off the printer uh, about 15 minutes ago these are my main sticks uh, they're not exactly the same length because I haven't done any uh, cutting or anything Uh, all right, one stick, two sticks, three sticks. Look at that. Now you'll notice they wobble. See that? When I did the design on this yesterday, I actually made all of these holes with a 0 0.6 millimeter tolerance. What I mean by that is, all of these sticks are 12.7 millimeters. If you measure them with this, they measure between 12.63 and 12.67, or maybe a little bit more. So I call it 12.7. Now, when you're a novice printer, what I mean, uh, you, you've got your 3D printer, you're still learning how to do your 3D designs and put your parts together and some of the tolerances, you're gonna become realizing that in your design, you have to build in a particular tolerance to make your parts fit perfectly. And on my printer, that's a 0 0.4 millimeter tolerance. So these sticks are 12.7 millimeters, but I made these holes at 13.3 millimeters. That's a 0 0.6 millimeter tolerance, so they have a bit of slop. If I were to make these holes 13.1, uh, these would have been a perfect fit, but I actually wanted some particular slop. As you're an intermediate, uh, your, your skills move up in your modeling and you're comfortable with your printer, um, you're going to be able to design those tolerances in without even thinking about it, and you're going to not you're going to reduce the amount of test prints that you go through in your builds. Um, that's another reason why I make these a little bit bigger than I normally would because I don't want to actually have an accident and have to reprint a part for some stupid reason. It's all happened to us, but that's the thing, that's, that's what we're doing. And now here's my foot. Okay, where's my hole? There's my hole in the front. Okay. 
different foot here. The foot, if you weren't around yesterday, is just simply, I'm going to put a weight on here. This will be glued in. These will all be glued in. I'll use a CA glue uh, tip there for the PLA uh, filament and wood, or PLA and PLA. A medium CA glue is a wonderful bonding material for PLA. So all of this will be PLA glue. That's another reason why I'm okay with going with a, a slightly bigger gap, uh, slightly a little bit more uh, leeway in these, is because of the medium uh, CA glue. It's a bit of a gap filler, and it'll fill in nicely, and you'll end up with a really uh, well-bonded, solid design afterwards. So this will have a weight on it, and then it'll keep it from tipping over. So now let's find out what's going on here. I'm really sorry if I'm a bit stuffed up. It is so dry here. Uh, in this wicked cold snap that's just ending uh, and I cannot stay ahead of it. Uh, this is a good stick. It's the next longest one I have. I'm going to just hold this down. I'm going to make sure when I do glue those in though I actually make the effort to separate them. Okay, and that's pretty good. Perfect. Now with the weight here, this is going to have this will be sitting out here. The, uh, that's the next step that we're going to make. Well, that actually came out exactly like I expected to design it. Perfect. I'm not going to glue anything together yet. Of course, now we've got a lot of build to go ahead yet. Hey, look at that. It's even staying. Cool. So what is this? Well, this camera, I don't expect it to stay there too long. This camera will be mounted either here or like this. Now the reason why I can put it on top or it can be put on the bottom depends on what mount we're going to make. <clears throat> I'm really sorry. I don't know if this is poor etiquette or not, but I'm not a young man in my radio days anymore where I can just sit at the, uh, in the radio booth for hours and sip or not even drink at all. Anyways, this will be mounted up here. There's the camera. Perfect. That'll give me a straight down view. And I know... Oh, okay. Well, that's already running. I know that if I have this... I know. Sorry about my belly. Uh, if I have this up here at the right height, I get a good view. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. That's going to be exactly the right height. I have that, oh there it is. I can see my mat. Now if I had another camera, I'd have it mounted up here with a different type of tripod. <laughs> Things are coming, right? You gotta build your own studio. Yeah, I bumped my table. Anyways. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. So yeah, that is definitely gonna work. And, you know, if I wasn't doing the live stream, I probably would not have built the extra tolerances in there anyways. I would have made it a tighter fit. Um, but that's okay. The mount that we're going to make today won't have any of those really loosenesses, loosenesses in it. Instead, we'll make it really tightnesses. <laughs> it really is just coffee. All right, so let's stick some of these in here. Okay, these three are my legs. I'll put them over there with my uh, flexible measuring stick. What I need now is just a mount that's going to hold this secure. It can go on here and it's going to be able to slide and rotate. It would be nice if, <laughs> if this could rotate on it as well. That's a step we'll look at later. In the meantime, we'll just go with the easy one because that's really all I need. 
the way my table set up is I want this to be able to cover this mat at a minimum and it can pretty close <laughs> but um, I can use a, a, a little bit of extra height there anyway so that's good this is be good so yeah because it's going to be mounted solid here uh, I don't need it really to swivel I just have to make sure that I can get it parallel and at the right height so needing to go at a 45 degree angle isn't necessary that's why I'm not going to go with that extra complexity. And if you think about it, trying to go with some sort of a swivel action, going with just a solid mount is fairly straightforward, but going with a swivel action that you can lock adds a whole new complexity. Um, but we'll think about it. If we get to that point, uh, I do have some ideas that might work. Eh. Anyways, what are we going to do about this? How, what kind of mount do we want to look at? You know what? I can't see if anybody is even online or chatting. Okay, well, nobody's chatting, nobody's online, it's just me, no worries. <laughs> okay, so I need a mount. Uh, what am I going to do? So first of all, it's going to be, and the other thing is, is uh, if I had uh, uh, this sit here, you can see what I'm writing without being way over there. Plus, this will actually be a higher quality camera than what you're seeing me stream on. The only reason why I'm streaming on this uh, really crappy camera is because the audio is also coming through the microphone in this camera. And it syncs up, the video with the audio. When I'm using one of these other cameras, the video is actually delayed a little bit and it really messes with the brain. You know how it is when you're the audio is just a little bit behind uh, the video. Not a lot. If it was a lot, you can kind of see, immediately see what's going on. But if it's just that little bit, oh, it really messes with your brain. It's like, because sometimes it'll look like it's really uh, uh, in sync, but other times it's like, wait, what? <laughs> and that's, it's, it's driven me nuts a few times. Anyways, let's figure out what we're doing for a mount. Okay, first of all, it's going to have to be just, I'm just going to go with a rectangle with a hole in it. The hole will be where the stick goes. This will just be a rectangle uh, with a hole and then I'll have another set screw that comes in the bottom. I'll use a nice set screw for that. Let's see here. What can I use for a set screw? Alright, let's go over here. I need a set screw. Oh, you know what? I wonder. Uh, okay, so that's random screws. This is springs and wires, nerf, darts. Random screws. Okay, I don't need the nerf darts or the random wires. Let's have a look in here. Um, see now, if I have a camera here, <laughs> you can see what I'm doing, but you can't because you're only on the crappy streaming camera. Um, no, there's really nothing in here. Ooh. That's interesting. Nothing in here that's going to make a good uh, set screw. What's in here? Why don't I just sit down, right? So these are all round heads. That's all round heads. These are all round heads. You know, the reason why I wanted to, I was hoping to find something in here is because they're black. And they look good, but you know what? I'm going to save these for other projects then. No, nothing in there that's going to make me a good set screw. So let's uh, put those away. Well, that was unfortunate. Let's see what's in uh, what's in here. Hmm. 
why does everything I have have a round head on it? So here's a, a hex head on top of a round, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, nope. Definitely nope. Okay, you know what, we're going to do something different instead. Just had a different idea. I just thought of something. You know, I'm rummaging around looking for a screw. I want to have a set screw. So, imagine... Okay. You want it to be able to slide back and forth. You don't want to be able to change the angle, but when you're done, you don't want it to move. That's why we want a set screw in there. But what if we didn't use a set screw? Is there some other way that we can just use our 3D uh, CAD design in our 3D printer and just make something that will be useful to us that will give us all of those uh, uh, attributes? Well, actually, I just think there is. And we're going to go ahead and design it. This way, I don't have to always look around for the right screw. You know, yesterday, I was adjusting a screw on uh, a different type of mount. Here, in fact, I'll even show it to you. Oh, I can't. It's in use. <laughs> uh, it's holding this camera up. But it has one of those screws that pulled out, one of the round-headed screws with a washer and a, uh, um, a wing nut on the back, and I just used a wing nut. But I was making an adjustment over the corner of my table here and I had my little garbage can underneath it. And this garbage can is generally full of papers and stuff like that that I'll end up with recycling. It's the only stuff that comes off of my hobby table. And I'm spinning that and it came apart and the bolt fell right into here and I couldn't find it. It just disappeared into this. <laughs> so I had to go find a new bolt. It was like, oh. So my point is, is what if you didn't need any bolts or anything like that? I actually think that there's an interesting way that we can make a little squeaky squeezable bit that will actually take care of that for us. Let's find out. If not, I'll just put a damn bolt in there. But that's what we need to do is I'm going to have a little uh, a square rectangle with a hole and some way to squeeze that together to make it uh, useful. That might not work. I might just have to use a screw. My idea isn't going to work. It's going to take a lot more design work than what I've got to do today. So we'll just make a square and then there was this idea from this fellow at Thingiverse. I'll show you uh, his uh, thing, uh, his, uh, the link to this in my description as well as uh, when I get back to the computer. This is for a phone and it's two pieces actually that are held together with a rubber band or several rubber bands. It uses a GoPro mount, and it's got this little bit that slides inside, and it is actually a really nice design, simply because there are no other mechanical parts, there's no screws or gears or anything like that, uh, no set screws, and it just uses a few rubber bands that most everybody will have laying around the house, uh, and it will hold your phone quite well at all of the angles that you really need it to, and it comes with the GoPro mounts on both sides which make it actually really easy to, because everybody already has GoPro mounts, and you can 3D print this directly. I have one of these on my own uh, Thingiverse. Wow, my nose is right messed up. You guys must be hating this. Oh, pardon me. Uh, but that's a really neat idea, but I'm not going to do that for this. Actually, you know what? Huh, what if I did do this for this? It doesn't have to be. Well, yes. This is too big for that. Hmm. We could use a very similar system to what we've done here to hold that. I really think it's a good idea. Don't need this. Hmm. 
What if we just made this longer? We just make this bit longer. See, I'm always for making things simple. <laughs> Now that is slippery, but what I'll do is I'll actually just put some uh, uh, foam or something in there to uh, give it a bit of grip on each side. But that will work fine. So, hey, that actually just makes life a lot easier, doesn't it? Here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. We're going to take this little 3D printed GoPro mount. We'll extend it down this way uh, to a nice big rectangle. Yeah. And then we'll put in uh, a 13.1 millimeter hole going this way for the stick to go through. That'll be like this. With a set screw in the bottom. And then we'll actually go to Thingiverse and get this. And we'll just redesign it a bit to accommodate this. And that'll actually make things a lot easier. See? A little bit of thought up front, a little bit of messing around, and all of a sudden we can figure out how to make existing parts, or reuse existing parts, um, to help what we're going to do. And, you know, I do that a lot. That's actually a big part of what I want to show you all uh, with all of my very various series, is, is that we don't have to always use pieces exactly as they come. As an intermediate hobbyist, you should be able to learn to just grab whatever you want and figure out how to adapt to it. So I'm going to show you some tricks on how to take uh, an old file from Thingiverse, something that is just a, uh, uh, an STL file, and make it much more editable in Fusion 360. So we have a couple of parts that we're actually going to reuse um, from Thingiverse. One of them is this mount itself, and then um, these. Uh, phone mount, and then we're actually going to figure out how to just make it work on this stick. Wow, makes life easier. Anyways, what we're going to do is I'm going to transfer over to my uh, Fusion 360 now, so if you just give me a minute, uh, we'll uh, continue in a moment. Hi, and we should be back. You should be able to hear me a little loud and clear now. Okay, so this is where we left off yesterday. Now, um, I looked at my stream and I realized that a few things were missing, like you couldn't actually see uh, the browser list here on the left side or anything that I was doing on the, when pop-ups showed up on the right side, they actually weren't showing up like that. So that's an interesting thing about capturing the uh, Fusion 360 screen is there's several layers, you gotta pay attention to that. Okay, now this is where we left yesterday. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to come into here. I'm gonna add another stick. So I'm just gonna make my base. I'm gonna offset a plane.
actually no I'm just gonna oops I'm gonna keep it right there I'm gonna do that instead I'm gonna put a uh, sketch on there I'm going to project that I just need the center point for that I'm gonna put a 12 point uh, sorry 13.1 Just to make sure that I don't actually do something wrong, I'm going to make that out that projected line is now a construction line, so I can't accidentally extrude off of it. I'm going to finish that. I'm just going to extrude this into a new stick. This is just to give me something to work with. 28, I'm going to go to about 40. It's just to give me something to work with for the next step. It doesn't have to actually be that long. Uh, I'm gonna make it look this well darn it see I did it wrong I want to make a new body out of you thank you very much there we go there we go okay now if we pop over to Thingiverse on my go uh, kitecraft I'm in here. This is my GoPro tripod mount. I'm going to go ahead and download this. I think I actually already have. See, the thing is, is I can't, I can't find the uh, original file I used to make this because this is a a remake of somebody else's original GoPro mount. <laughs> uh, what happened is, uh, the, I like the original mount. It was just a tripod mount. It had a hole in the bottom, but it was shallower than this. It wasn't very tall. This distance right here, so I just made a long, made it taller so that I could use a longer bolt, and then I posted it up here. And I don't think I kept the the file, so I'm just going to make sure I've downloaded this. I'm pretty sure I have. I think I prepared for this earlier. Uh oh, now Thingiverse was fixed. They were running a lot better over the last few days. I don't know if you've noticed. They actually uh, were running really, 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 really bad. And then they were running really, 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 really bad. And then they were running so bad, I actually gave up on them for a while. <laughs> uh, but I popped in, and they were said had this banner saying we were doing maintenance, and now that banner's gone away, and they're actually running well. I mean, like, surprisingly well. So I've already downloaded this, the 3D uh, tripod mount. Now, this is an STL file. I'm in Fusion 360. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to open that from my computer, this GoPro. Uh, tripod mount STL file and there it is boy that's ugly I don't even know if that's the right scale we'll find out <laughs> anyways we really can't do much when it's in this for format so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to check if we right check up here where it says unsaved this sh should say capture design history leave it Right-click. Uh, where is it? Sorry, go on the body. Mesh body. Right-click. Right here it says Mesh to B rep. Click it. You get this little box that pops up over here. One selected, operation, new body. Provided you're not dealing with something really big and complicated with a lot of triangles, this should work just fine. Click it. Click it. Okay. Uh, now, real quick, um, from there, just going to measure it. Uh, why aren't you parallel? You pick a point. Pick a point. Uh, Twenty millimeters. Uh, Hundred. Wow. Really? It's not that big. So 
So this is not what you expect, is it? Let's have a look at the width of this thing. So now if I had an overhead camera, this would be a lot better. It's 24 millimeters wide. Let's have a look at what it says here. It, uh, it doesn't. <laughs> wow. Twenty-four. Okay, actually, it is the right size. So yay. Uh, it's uh, ten times too big. Why is it ten times too big? Four millimeters. I don't know if you can see that. Twenty-four millimeters. Twenty-four point zero two seven. If I look on this, it says twenty-four point zero seven. So that was weird. It wanted a uh, hundred times bigger. So what I'm saying here is that the very first thing you do is you check to make sure it's the right size. Okay. So it comes in as an STL and it's all messed up and you can't really deal with it. So you click on, you make sure you don't, you're not capturing the design history because the next step is only available when that is turned off. So you go ahead and you click that option, mesh to B-Rep, and you create a new body. And it creates this gnarly thing with all of these triangles and not a single parallel surface on it and it's horrible. First thing you do, try and find a couple of points get its dimensions and make sure what size you're dealing with. It's either going to be right or it's going to be off. It could have imported as inches. Weird thing, sometimes I import things and down here on the bottom right, you'll see it says 24.027 millimeters. Other times, it'll actually come up as inches despite the fact that everything is defaulted to millimeters and centimeters and metric. Fusion 360 will decide, hey, I'm going to go with this model in inches, and I don't know why. It's really weird. So check. Okay, we've checked. We're happy. We know it's the right size. No, we're not. We're just going to do one more sanity check. <laughs> we're going to check it this way. This is about 19 and a half millimeters. Let's check it. Nineteen point five seven. What does this say? Nineteen point five one. So we're we're pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, go ahead. Right click on here. You see at the very bottom it says capture design history. Turn that back on. There we go. Okay. Everything we do now will actually create our timeline on the bottom. Those first couple of steps won't. We're going to go ahead and save this now. GoPro tripod mount, and I'm going to save it in here for now. Yay. Now, the fun bit. We can just clean up all of this stuff by removing some of these triangles. Just click on them and delete. It'll just make it a little bit easier to look at and work with. And it's fun. If you're like me, uh, stuff like this is almost therapeutic in nature. You just kind of go through and you click and delete and just see what's going to get removed. And if not, you just move on and uh, you just develop a, a zen-like thing. Uh, it's sort of like a, a violence, but without the actual violence. Because you're just, you're just deleting all of these triangles. Uh, hunt them down. Sometimes they don't delete, so you have to click around until you finally find the ones that will actually kill it. Death to all triangles. Ah, da -da -da. Okay, so you're out there on the Serengeti and you've got this big old gun in your hand and you're hiding in the bush and along comes this highly triangulated 
uh, mesh that you really want to destroy. So you get out your gun and you point at it, and every time you pull your trigger, uh, a, a triangle is killed. <laughs> okay, just trying to kill all these triangles. This is something that uh, you don't have to do this. You really don't. If you're anal like me, then you it's a, you have to. You have no choice. It's just a, 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 you're going to do it. It's an obsession. It's like an OCD. Oh, no. God, do it. See how some of these aren't deleting? You just kind of move on until you find the right ones that will delete. And then eventually, um, either all of them will or they won't. It's okay. It makes it easier to change your model though, if you have all of these uh, triangles gone. Now I don't really, oh the other thing about doing that is you're never going to get a circle. Um, when you make your file in Fusion 360 and you export it as an STL, you're going to have beautiful circles. But when you import that exact same STL back into Fusion 360, you will never have a circle. They're always going to look like that and that's okay, not a big deal. But that's not the point of what I was talking about. You can actually take an STL file into um, Fusion 360 and work with it. Okay, so I've got this. I could go ahead and keep anally retentively removing, hey, look at that, rem removing all of these uh, um, triangles. <laughs> like that. Um, perfect, look at that. That's a nice straight edge there. I like that. I'm going to leave those angles in there. Nice. Okay, good. Yep. Okay, now, I want to have... Remember, I was saying I want to pull this down so that I can have my stick coming in the side like that. So, I need this edge to be flat. Hang on. I'm going to do it like that. So, I need... I need one side of this to be flat. This side looks flat. Look at that. So here's what we're going to do. See if this works. I'm going to pick there. I'm going to create a uh, sketch on this plane. And then I'm going to create a two-point rectangle. Oops, nope. First I'm going to project something. I'm going to project that corner. And that corner. Yeah. Now I'm going to draw a two point rectangle. From there, to there. Now, now that I've drawn this, I'm going to use this to just cut out, um, hang on, you know what, I'm going to make that bigger, yeah, that's a good idea, uh, that's a good idea, let's just make that bigger, and make this bigger and then make that yeah sure okay so what I'm doing is I just made that big flat sketch according to one plane on there and I'm extruding the whole thing outwards and I'm giving it a cut just to make sure that there is nothing because of those panels with all of these little uh, uh, edges, they actually might not be flush. They actually might be off like that. So you got to pick one and just cut everything that's outside. And now we're going to go back and we're going to cut everything that's on the inside. And then we're going to go in and make our actual part that's going to stick down that our stick is going to go in. Boy, you got to love my technical languages here. I'm going to just do that. So now I'm going to cut this back. Maybe not that far. Yeah, I'm gonna, no, 
actually that's not a bad place. No, that's a, a little bit too far. Uh, 150, let's go to 160. Yeah, I think 160 is good. Okay. So that's gone. And it did that. <laughs> it's exactly what I... <laughs> okay. Oh, hang on. So we can just fix that real easy. Here's what we're going to do. Go back to the sketch. Edit it. Uh, make you go away. Put another two-point rectangle in here. Finish our sketch, put that out back. Oh, see all these X's down here at the bottom? We can make them go away. There, we'll just stick them in a group. That way we don't lose them. We can always go back and undo everything. These are all those deletes that I was doing earlier when I was hunting all the triangles. We just put them in a group, make them go away. Now I want to take this uh, extrusion and I want to change it by adding those to it. There, see? Why didn't that cut? That's interesting, isn't it? Huh. Well, look at those things hanging about. Sometimes artifacts uh, happen. Anyways, we can get rid of those. Just push it out of the way. Or maybe not this time. Well, you see, I, usually that works. I mean, really, usually it does. We just can't get rid of this. <laughs> oh, sure. I picked a really horrible model to demonstrate this on. It's just got things sticking all the way around. What is that? if we can cut it off yay you know sometimes it's just you got to work at it okay so there we go and that is off what is the size of this anyways I better look to make sure it's even big enough to fit my dowel in yeah just a bit that's good here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a new sketch Let's put a line in here. Where'd my sketch go? <laughs> that was weird. Well, I don't know what I hit. Okay, now let's put in a big old rectangle. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to extrude the rectangle one way and then I'm going to... Is that the corner I want? That's the corner I want. So I'm, I'm projecting these out to my sketch. I'm going to draw a rectangle around them, and then I'm going to extrude it all a couple of different directions to get the bit that I want. <laughs> that made no sense. What are you talking about, dude? Okay, so there's my uh, three parts. There we go. Now, okay. Two point two. Yeah. Nope. One. Mm 
Okay, uh, actually I have a different idea now. Uh, come on, there we go. Press pull. I need this to be so. I need 13 plus a bit of a gap. Uh, let's see, 13, 15, 16, 17. Let's go with um, 23. Sure, why not? That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. Shoot. All right. Well, let's just see if I can do this. Nope. Oh, you're not gonna be nice to me, are you? You're gonna be weird. Sometimes some of these models are just very. I don't like being messed with. I'm going to have to leave it like that and then deal with it later. Okay, so what am I really trying to do? It's this. I want to put a sketch on here and I'm going to poke a hole in here that's 13.1 millimeters for my uh, wooden dowel that's going to oops 13.1 okay and I want to put it about let's say 15 no uh, 9 uh, 10 sure and then I'm going to make it here, where's the middle? There we go. So we're all lined up. We're all happy. What's the distance um, from there to there? Six. And the distance from here to here is three and a half. Ten, eleven, twelve. Let's make it thirteen. And let's make it twelve. Okay, so I got. Why? What is so weird down there? Okay. Now I'm just going to clean up a bit here. Uh, I'm going to put a rectangle here. Cut it back about that far, just half. Just because I want to get rid of all of those weird artifacts that are happening inside here. Like that. Okay, so that edge is cleaned. Now let's go clean up this edge. I'm going to put a sketch here, draw a rectangle from that. Sorry. from this corner in line with this bottom edge all the way out to here and then take both of these and I'm just going to push them in like half a millimeter or whatever it was oh doesn't even like that Okay, so that's even worse than usual.
right? Okay, let's put a different sketch in here. Come on, where'd you go? Just thought I saw I'm doing that on the wrong side. So if I have it, like that, if I have it like that, if I have it coming off, Actually, what I want to do. No, that's not what I want to do. So I did mess this up. I messed this entirely up. So I'm going to back this up a whole bunch. I was working on the wrong side. What is that? I want to go back one more. What is this? Okay, so let's back that up. <laughs> and actually, I do want to have it sticking straight up. So I just need to put a hole. I just need to extend the bottom of this. I need to close that off. What I'll do is I'm going to make a sketch here. I'm just going to put a big hole right about there. Get a measurement from here to here. about 10 millimeters all right so now I'm going to take all of this I'm just going to jam it straight down about 11 yeah and then I'm going to do a join that should just get fill in the hole that's all that's going to do what's my measurement here this is about 12 so I want to go about Eight more. Um, oh, what's wrong with you? Let's uh, let's put a sketch on there and just exclude that strut that sketch. Eight. Sure, why not? try and clean up this front a bit. Just by doing that same trick. Okay, so because it didn't give me any red, I know there's nothing to worry about there. So I'm just going to go in about uh, minus 0 0.6, 0 0.4. So I'm just going to redo that. I'm actually just going to make a bigger, uh, what's my dimension here? 
Do I even need to? It's 15. No, I don't. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> Let's just put a, uh, a plane on there. I'll set a plane on there. Put a sketch on that. I'm going to project. Did I put a sketch on there? Yeah. Then I'm going to project those corners. Make the body go away, draw a rectangle. Okay. Close enough. Now I need to draw a circle from that midpoint to that midpoint. I need it to be 13.1. Good enough. Finish that. Bring the body back. And we'll cut that. I said there's particular violence in this, so I'm going to cut you. There, cut you. Okay, so that's my uh, good enough. I don't really care if it's good enough. It's good enough. That's my 13.1. So now I've got this. With that sticking through it, I just need a hole in there. I need a set screw. My idea that I was thinking of earlier is not going to work. It is not going to work at all. Okay. I need a hole in here. So let's put a sketch in here. Uh, I need to put a line. I'm going to make this a... Uh, go away. Whoa. From there to there. That was not in the right place. Okay, so I've got a sketch. I'm just going to project that whole base, make life easy. You go away. Let's draw a line from there straight down. Good enough. I need a hole right in the middle. How big is my hole? Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do I want to use for a set screw? I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me for a minute while I go hunting for a set screw. Okay, so you use what's handy, right? Well, I'm using what's handy. Okay, uh, I've got a, a screw here. This is going to work good enough for me. It's going to measure on its diameter. Now, if I had, uh, if this was finished, I could do all this the right way. Uh, Six point two. So this is a screw hole, uh, so I'm actually going to make it 6.2. Um, that extra tolerance, if I take it away, gives a perfect cut for the threads, and I don't have to do anything uh, uh, to make it work. So I'm just going to actually make a 6.2 millimeter hole, and it'll just be fine. That'll be my set screw for now. I might even tap it, who knows. Uh, but that's it. That's, <laughs> we're done. That's all I needed for that. I'm going to save it. Now, the other bit is... Is this part. So let's go find... That. Now, I made 
this the other day. In fact, here it is on Thingiverse. Uh, you know, I think it's nice. If you make a part from somebody, or even if you modify it, you should go back and, you know, post about it. Tell the guy you did a good job, because it's nice to hear. It's encouraging. Um, so I'm going to just download. What do I need? I'm going to leave this bit the way it is. I don't need to change this, but I want to make this longer. I'm back. So that's on there. I want to leave. I want to. Uh, huh. I just thought of something. If I keep the same base, but just make this longer, then I can use the same base wherever and just. Hey, okay. So that's a good idea. Let's just do that. <laughs> okay. So um, on the main file, let's go find. The uh, the top, yeah, and we'll download that. We'll open it into a new file. Okay, so step one. Interesting color scheme he's got going on there. I must be. I don't know. Okay, step one. Make sure that capture design history. Okay. Click on your body, right click on your body, click on mesh to B-Rep. Just easier to do it in here. Mesh to B-Rep and click on OK. Ah, so yeah, here we go. One, three, eight. So that's too many. That's what's going on here. Look at what else this is. Wow, there's a lot of crap going on here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop over to... The design? I haven't had to do this for a while. Oh, where is that option? If I could only remember. It was just there a minute ago. I lost it. There's an option. I'm on the. Uh, that's why I'm in the wrong place. There it is. Mesh. Uh, now we go to. Sometimes you got to relearn how to do some of this stuff, right? Sometimes you just gotta really learn how to do some of this. What I want to do is there's a a way to reduce all that triangles. Uh, uh, I just can't remember what it was. Been so long since I had to do some of this crazy stuff. If people would just post the step files with their designs. It's under this mesh menu somewhere. No, it's not construct. No, it's not inspect. It isn't. There it is. Reduce. Thank you very much. So I basically just want to reduce this by like a whole bunch. Uh, just to try and get it to be convertible. Where's my mesh to be wrap option? Oh. Uh, 
Okay, uh, adaptive density, face count. I want to change the face count from that down to a much smaller number. Okay. Alright, so that did that. Now let's go see if I can actually go back and uh, do this. Still no. Yes, oh, actually, this time it's asking me at least, so yeah. Good enough. See, that was a lot of work. Come on. Now, all I want to do is I just want to flatten that. Yes. And I just want to make this longer. Right? I don't want to do anything weird. I just want to make it longer. So I got my uh, tablet. I've got the top, the, this part here. So I need to make that quite a bit longer. Uh, let's say 40. Let's say 45. I'm going to make it 45 millimeters longer. Press pull. Why is it not giving me the option I want? Oh, hey, did I turn it back on? Did somebody yell at me? Capture design history. Make sure you yell at yourself if you don't turn that back on. You will be hating life if you do not turn that back on. <laughs> okay. I didn't check the size of this, did I? What's the size of that? Fifty-four. Twenty-three. Yeah, see? Uh, interesting. Oh, no, twenty-three. It says it's right. Twenty-three. But it's too big. I gotta scale this whole thing to a tenth again. Why is it doing this to me? Now that says 23 millimeters. Now it's right. 23.7. That says 23.5. Okay, so that's good. I wonder if something's messed up here. Um, I wonder if one of these new updates actually did something weird to my uh, measurements because everything's off by a weird amount. Um, what's my unit value? looks fine, doesn't it? It's fine. It's fine, isn't it? It's fine, right? Is it fine? I think it's fine. Looks fine. I don't know. What are we doing here? Why is it? All right, whatever. I'll have to dig about it. Okay, so front. Come on, give me a number. Give me a number. Uh, 5.4? 5.5. All right, good. So weird. Uh, really. Uh, so I'm going to extrude this 45. Why is this so slow? 
This is not a good design. It seems to be killing my uh, computer. It's all of those angles in there. It really did a wild import, but that's okay. I'm going to do an extrude instead of a push and pull. Why are you digging at me, you crazy? Okay. Extrude. Uh, Alright, see? That wasn't complicated. There. That's all I need to do. I wonder if I can uh, get rid of some of these. If I click on that and do a delete, what happens? Hey. Kill those triangles. Kill them. Kill them all. Kill them all. Come on. Or just hang Fusion 360. Oh, please don't die. Okay, save it. Yes. So don't forget, uh, catch me this uh, evening for KiteCraft Plays Games. I'll be streaming Mist. In fact, that's one of the big reasons why I'm making this whole tripod mount. I'll be doing a second, or the third and final random tutorial, or random build live stream for this tripod uh, later this afternoon. I'm just about done here. I'm going to take these away. I'm going to print these parts. I'll come back and do a random model uh, part three live stream. Finish the whole thing. We'll glue everything together, we'll put the screws in and we'll make it all work together. And I'll have a brand new top-down camera. Join me this evening at 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Kitecraft plays games. I'm going to be live streaming Mist. Now, I've been gaming and building my own computers for a very long time. So I played Mist when it was new. And in fact, Mist helped drive the adoption of the CD-ROM. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. The thing about Mist is it's such a compelling adventure game. You have to take a lot of notes. You're going to want a notepad and a couple of pencils and a straight edge, uh, and you're going to be wanting taking a lot of notes. So I want this top-down camera on my table beside me so that when I'm playing this game, you can see how all of these notes are actually taking place. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about what it was like to play Mist when that game first came out and on period hardware. Remember, we're talking about these massive CRT monitors with only a screen that's like, you know, in the 20s, in the low 20s even. But boy, I'm really looking forward to playing that. So we're just about finishing up with this uh, episode of Random Build. We're just about done. I'm going to see if I can kill a few more of these. Oh, Max. So don't forget, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is from Go for Games. This GoPro, GoPro tripod phone mount. Now the thing I noticed is that when I actually printed this base and I imported it in the slicer, it didn't import well at all. Uh, also, it wasn't manifold. It wasn't manifold, so Slicer had to spend a, a time fixing it. But it's a it's a good good mount. The reason why I like it so much is is it works with just a GoPro mount, and you can just three D print them, and everybody has GoPro mounts laying around, so I'm sure you can just use one. Uh, it doesn't have any mechanical components. It uses just rubber bands. But it, and it, it's a easily adjustable for any phone size, and I like that. So I'm going to print a new one, and uh, this will be my top-down camera, and we'll go from there. So we're just about finished. Just going to fix this up. That day, again, it was Go for Games on Thingiverse. Go check them out. On KiteCraft on Thingiverse, you can find some of my prints on there as well. And uh, let's just try and get rid of some of these uh, side ones. No? All right. Now, I'm going to show you one last little trick here. Unless I actually killed Fusion 360 this time. Nope, good. Save that. So if I go back over to my tripod. There it is. Open up my side. I've got my, uh, my mount here. I'm going to drag that GoPro tripod mount into here and there it is now let's just move it around a bit I'm just trying to get it close to the end of it that's all
Okay, good enough. Now, to actually get lined up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my uh, alignment option, align, and then I'm going to pick here. You see how that highlights? And I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pick this. And boom. Now, I don't know why it does that sometimes. It's really annoying. Oh, you know what? I totally screwed up. I've got to back up. Get rid of that. I got to, on my tripod, I got to make sure that uh, I'm focused on the top level. When I import this, it's going to. It's going to import it into whatever component I have uh, active. So I want it active on the top level. There we go. Now we're just going to manually move it around a bit. And there we go, pull it away a bit. Now I'm going to use the alignment tool right there, align, just to get it right exact, whoops, exactly uh, in line. No, not the hole, you darn. Align, right there. Now you might be wondering, you might be sitting there using your own Fusion 360 going, what the hell? No, I don't have a line. Where's this align? So you click S, there's no align. You type in A-L-I-G-N, there's a line. You put your mouse over it, and what you'll see is you can just grab it and... Wait, what? Why can't I do that? I thought I could just drag it up there. Oh, it's because I already have it. Let's try a new one. Let's try a corner. If I don't, if I, because I don't already have it, type in, click that little icon there, and it'll pop up into the top. I use a line so much, I actually want it present all the time. So I'm just going to finish moving this a little bit. I'm just going to rotate it uh, around that central point. Pick my pivot point. I'm going to pick my... Why aren't you... Uh, why are you not being nice? Set my pivot point to be right in the middle of that. And I'm just going to turn it up. And now I'm going to move it on. Good enough. So there we go. That's really all I needed to do. I'm going to go ahead and print uh, the tripod mount. And this super tall bit. That's it. Uh, it's sometimes surprising how suddenly you just, you're, you're done, you ran the build, everything working well, and uh, off you go. So that's, uh, I think that brings us to the end of today's random build, or this episode of part two of my random build. Like I said, check back later for uh, uh, part three, and then of course I'll be playing Mist tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. In the meantime, go check out my Patreon. Uh, if you want to donate a couple bucks, I can get a license for Visual Micro, I can get some new video cameras, and I can pay rent. Um, <laughs> have a drink uh, so I think we'll probably be back it's going to take probably only a couple of hours to print all of this stuff I need to and uh, we'll be back and see how well it all, all comes together so uh, yeah stick around or uh, hopefully uh, you'll get a notification from me subscribe if you haven't yet please subscribe turn on notifications uh, and you'll get notified of when I do these random build up uh, streams and of course Mist tonight. I'm so looking forward to playing Mist. Now it's not the original Mist. It's actually called Real Mist, and I'll talk about the differences later on. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Kitecraft. This has been Random Builds. Uh, what can you say? I hope you're having a great day out there. Stay warm. Bye now. <laughs>